Welcome back YouTube pipe smokers. Mutton Chop Piper here. Well today's video is entitled How to Come How to Determine Your Ultimate Tobacco. That's your ultimate tobacco. We've got a lot to unpack here, so let's take a look at it. Alright. So um I've written myself some notes to, so I can keep it all together. Um, okay, so I got to thinking about this. I got to thinking about what constitutes my ultimate tobacco. The tobacco that I, the, the qualities and features that I'm looking for in an ultimate tobacco. Now, before we get started too far, this, this video is, of course, for everyone, but it's primarily for those intermediate pipe smokers that, I don't know, you've been smoking for a couple of years, you've tried, I don't know, you know, several blends, and uh, you've tried different types of tobaccos, and now you're kind of wanting to know how to go about figuring out what your ultimate tobacco would ultimately be. So today I'm going to share with you what my ultimate tobacco is. Um, but first of all, we're going to go through some of the features that you need to look at uh, in order to come to that decision. So the first thing you got to figure out, the first thing you want to determine is, do you, is your ultimate tobacco an aromatic or an English blend? Now, an aromatic blend is any blend that that has that that has a casing that is heavily cased, um, heavily cased with um, could be caramel or vanilla or cherry, um, you know, bourbon of some kind. Um, it's 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 got it's got um, some non-tobacco components that have been added. Heavily, I'm talking about heavily, not not spritzed on or whatever. It's heavily cased. Um, so you got to determine is is that is an aromatic blend going to be part of your ultimate, or is an English blend? Now, an English blend is going to include uh, these types of tobaccos: uh, Virginias, Latakias, Orientals, Perique's, or Burleys. Now, there is some argument. Now, a true English blend uh, has no casings at all added. All it has is like a sugar water um, uh, additive to keep it fresh longer and to uh, keep it uh, from, you know, going bad. Uh, that's that's how they would do that do that's how they try to keep tobacco fresher longer um, back when uh, they were sailing the seas uh, they would try to put some sugar water on it and it worked pretty well so we've kept that um, but if there's any casings that are added to that then it's not considered a true English but there are tobaccos out there that have these um, these blend components that do that have been casings have been added. That's what's called an American English. So a true English is straight from England. Um, well, not straight from England, but it's it's a process where there's no uh, casings that are added. No, uh, you know, no caramel or bourbon or any of that kind of stuff is added. It's just it's just the natural taste of the tobaccos that are combined together. Now, an American English, we don't have that constraint. So a lot of times we'll take two or three of those blends and we'll spray it with bourbon or we'll put something else in it to kind of enhance it or um, make it taste, enhance the taste or make it taste a little bit different. So you got to determine whether that's what you're looking for. Um, either... It's going to be an aromatic, an English, or an English, or, or an American English. Um, so mine, 
Uh, my ultimate tobacco is is an English. It's an English blend. Now we're going to look at the cuts. What kind of cuts of tobacco do you like? Um, the cuts that, that are out there are shag, are shag, ribbon, flake, coin cut. They're cut from a rope and there are, they are sliced into small coins. Um, rope, of course, plug, and crumble cake. So th there's a lot of different consistencies out there. Um, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I like my favorite ones are shag and ribbon. Um, flake I'm okay with if I can rub it out pretty good. Um, I don't particularly like plug. Um, and I do like crumble cake. Uh, but the ones I don't really like, I, I don't mind the coin cut. Um, I can kind of fold those and put them in. Um, but for me, uh, my favorite cut of tobacco is ribbon. Closely uh, followed by shag. Now, there's not a lot of shag tobaccos out there. Uh, Eliza, Elizabethan mixture is the only, only one I can come to mind right now. But, um, but ribbon is quite popular and it's quite prolific when it comes to uh, both uh, English and um, aromatic blends. Now, you got to determine what moisture content you like. Uh, some people like their tobaccos really wet. Um, they're hard to light and they're hard to keep, keep lit. But um, I, I can understand why they would want that. Some want their tobacco really dry. Um, most, including me, I like it in the middle of the road. I don't like it too wet. I don't like it too dry. I just like it in that Goldilocks zone. Just perfect. Um, so that's mine. So let's review you here. My... Uh, the type of tobacco I like is going to be um, an English blend. My cut is going to be um, ribbon. So English ribbon and Goldilocks zone for the moisture. Now we're going to look at aroma. An English blend... Um, it depends on the, uh, the amount of each blend component that goes into the blend uh, de to determine what the aroma is going to be. If there's too much Latakia, it's just going to taste like a Latakia bomb. Uh, what, what I mean by that is it's just Latakia takes over everything. Um, English, I'm sorry, not English, but um, Virginia doesn't have a lot of... A lot of uh, a lot of aroma. Now, if it's aged, it does. You know, if it's if if it's been aging for a while, then it does have a, an aroma. Um, Orientals have a certain aroma, um, and then uh, Burleys definitely have an aroma as well. They all do. They all have their own aromas, but it depends on the type. The um, the amount of tobacco of each blend component that goes in and how it's mixed. Um, that, that will determine what aroma you're getting from that tobacco right out of the can. And now, in, now I'm sorry, aromatic blends, you know, you're going to get what you, <laughs> what it says on the, on the, on the actual package. Uh, if it's going to be a blend that's, you know, if it's got caramel, it's been added, then it's going to be an overwhelming caramel. Uh, if it's got cocoa, it's going to be overwhelming cocoa. Um, if it's got uh, cherry, it's going to be overwhelming cherry. So with an aromatic blend, you're going to get what pretty much they advertise on the tin as to what kind of tobacco is in that tin. The next thing you want to look at is ease of packing. 
or the type of packing you like. Some people really like a, a, a hard pack, a pack where um, the tobacco is uh, very uh, difficult to pack. Um, Trumbull cake's kind of like that. Um, flake is like that. And plug is like that. Um, so it depends on how difficult um, you want your pack to be. Now, if it's crumble cake, a lot of times, you know, you pretty much just have to drop it into the bowl and just kind of push it down because it's so dense that it doesn't really have any spring back. So you just kind of kind of play with that. I personally, I don't mind doing that if the tobacco is really worth it. Um, but again, the ribbon is going to give you uh, that three, three drop pack where you uh, fill the bowl up and you push it down lightly, fill the bowl up again, a little harder, fill up again and really pack it in there on the third time. And that gives you a consistent pack almost every time. So I like that. I like that consistency of, you know, I know most of the time when I pack it in that order and that, that, uh, that way that, um, I'm going to get a good light and it's going to stay lit for me throughout the smoke. Now, the next thing is lighting. Uh, how, how many times is it going to take you to get the bowl started? I find that when it's a crumble cake or it is a plug or it is a, um, a flake, it takes me a while. It takes me two or three, maybe four times to get it lit, doing the char light, and then getting that ember to start burning. Um, with the ribbon cut, though, and a shag cut, maybe once, maybe twice, mostly one time, but it's usually twice that I can uh, do my false light, my char light, and then do my second light and I get that ember burning. So um, again, that's that's an ease. It depends on what uh, the kind of person you are and the kind of tobacco you like and the kind of you know consistency uh, that you're looking at. If your favorite is um, flake, then you're going to put up or you're going to over time figure out a way to get that lit quickly. It's the, the next thing we're going to look at is ember consistency. So sometimes with a denser tobacco, uh, like a flake or a cube um, or a crumble cake, you're going to get a smaller burning ember um, because it's a lot denser. With a uh, shag or a ribbon, you're going to get a, probably a bigger, um, uh, a bigger ember, and it's going to be more consistent. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to, that ember is going to uh, burn down pretty consistently the whole way down. Um, relighting frequency. So how many times you have to relight it? Again, denser tobacco is going to cause you to relight more often than like a ribbon or a shag. Uh, so you've got to determine if, if that's something that you're willing to put up with or that you are, um, that are you're, you're willing to do because you like the tobacco so much. Um, and then the last thing that I don't think a lot of people, I haven't discussed it before, but, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of people have not really taken this into account, but aftertaste. Now, a lot of times after you smoke your pipe, this is for me, uh, this is my personal observation. You may be different. You may say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't have any aftertaste at all, but for me. After I smoke uh, my tobacco, um, I get an aftertaste. 
Now, sometimes the aftertaste is pleasant, sometimes it is not. There are a lot of tobaccos I'll smoke and I'll get the flavor and I'll be able to pull the flavor out of it. But once I'm done smoking and I've sat around, sat a while, I get an ashy kind of aftertaste and I really don't like that. Uh, so I kind of take that into account when I'm smoking the tobaccos that I'm smoking. If, if I like the tobacco enough, then I'll put up with it. Uh, but if I don't, if it's something new and I'm like, and there's things about it, well, you know, I don't really like this about it, I don't like that about it, the aftertaste is horrible, then I'm out. I probably will never smoke that again. So there are just a few things. Now, let me, let me preface this or put a caveat here about everything that I've mentioned. If the tobacco that you, let's say there's one category. For me, it's taste. Let's take me for an example. Taste. If I come across a tobacco that is unbelievable how great it tastes. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, Maltese Falcon. A Maltese Falcon is a, a crumble cake. Um, but it's really dense. It's really, uh, it's not my preferred type of, um, of cut. Uh, but I'll rub it out as best I can. And I'll get it into as small bits as I can. And then I'll put it in and light it. I like it so much that I'll put up with the fact that it's difficult to pack, difficult to light. And the ember is not real consistent for me. Um, so, uh, like I said, you, there may be something in here, uh, in those categories that, that I've discussed, that you love so much that you'll put up with everything else. I'll put up with the fact that it's a crumble cake. I'll put up with the fact that it's hard to pack, hard to light, hard to keep a consistent ember because of the taste and because how much I love the tobacco. Again, there are tobaccos I absolutely love, but I absolutely, it's the aftertaste is disgusting, but I'll do what I can to get that aftertaste out once I am done smoking that tobacco. Um, but so this is only talking about your ultimate tobacco. What is your ultimate tobacco? All the categories that I've mentioned, and there may be others that you factor in as well, but these are the ones that I factor in for myself. So, what is my ultimate tobacco? All right. So, I'm going to tell you what it is, but it, it's weird. Um, my ultimate tobacco is GOP's Montgomery, but it has to have seven years or more of age on it. So I do have some Montgomery that I aged and I'm working on that. I've got tobacco in the cellar that is aging. So I will always have some aged Montgomery, GOP's Montgomery, um, that I can smoke because uh, that's just my ultimate tobacco. And that's another category we didn't talk about. Um, can you, can, do you want fresh tobacco, uh, or do you want aged tobacco? I personally want aged because I've proven in other videos and I've proven it to myself that aging a tobacco that has Virginia in it. Now, Virginia is, again, the, the reason why, you know, you want the aging process is Virginia is, a, has, is sugar-based. Uh, it's sugar-based, so... That sugar does the same thing that it does in wine and in beer. It ferments. And so once that fermenting process starts, the aging process starts. And, and you've got that Virginia mixed all in with everything else. Latakias, um, everything else that may be in that, in that blend, it's 
running through the whole thing. Well, it's fermenting the whole time. So it it kind of creates, it kind of ferments everything else, causing the, uh, the blend to darken and deepen and the flavors are enhanced uh, through that aging process and ferment fermenting process. So again, you know, you may like a tobacco that is aged more than you do that is fresh. There may be people out there that just like fresh tobacco. You order it, you open it, and you smoke it. And that's and that's good. That's what I mostly do. I order tobacco and I smoke it. But if I'm really wanting my ultimate tobacco, and if I had one tobacco, and it's changed over, over the years, but as of now, right now, it's seven year aged Montgomery. Uh, just it just hits the spot for me. So in the comments, let me know what your ultimate tobacco is if you have one. For those seasoned tobacco, uh, I mean pipe smokers that have been smoking for years and they've come across, there's one tobacco that they just absolutely find fantastic. All right, well that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Until my next video, I want to wish you and your family happy piping.